Okay, so we're going to look through the thumbnails that I did for the illustration. The big thing with this is, you know, going through and finding things that you like, don't like. Okay, so this first one, I'm, you know, doing it from more of a top-down angle, and I'm looking at this, and I, it's okay, but, you know, to be honest with you, I don't like the fact that this is creating a big tangent here with this and his hands going to be hidden and there's there's too much going on and again this here is creating a tangent with her and I, I granted I have the power to simply uh, um, simply select her and just move her over a little bit but everything's still very close. Everything's more pointing to uh, Mab in the background than it is Molly in the foreground. And so I'm going to move on to the next one. And I think what's throwing me off in these is, you know, I've got, you know, this one I think is a better, a better preview. I'm, I'm going from almost a downward angle. Um, I think a big issue with this one is I'm, I'm looking at this one and again it's creating a tangent with her hips and the gun and I don't, I don't like that. Um, so I'm going to move on to the next one. Um, you know this one's better again I'm hiding the gun with this demon that's possessing her. Um, but again this area here starts it's just starting to get very convoluted and I, I, I think I boil this down into um, what I don't like about it is the uh, um, the the convolution right here. And then as I move to this one here, I think this is a little bit better. But again, um, I'm running into there's too much going on in the in the central focus area. You want to focus on one thing, and then everything else is secondary. Um, and I'm having the same composition. I just kind of flip the composition to see if it would do any better. I do like the way she's holding her gun, but as I move on in these thumbnail creations, I think the big thing is that I've got too many people here, too much going on, and too much to look at. So I narrow this down uh, to um, I narrow this down to pretty much a three category, uh, three person category. So I'm using Mab in the background, and then Harry in the middle ground, and then the foreground is. Uh, Molly. Um, so as I'm doing this again, it's creating a tangent here with Mab, but I don't, I don't like that. So I'm moving on to the next one. Um, you know, again, this is a little bit better, and it's actually, you know, this is actually getting the composition. But I really don't like the pose of the figure. You know, as I move on, I'm trying different things. I'm, I'm experimenting. I'm putting more agony in this particular pose, and I think that's a lot better. Um, you know, and I think this is this is uh, this composition is pretty good, but I think Harry is a little bit too close. Um, you know, making him too tall, which is a simple fix. I can move him up over here, um, and it's uh, going to be a lot about height and proportion and things like that. Um, I like this one a little bit better. Um, however, this particular uh, this particular one here is. Uh, um, pretty decent. I, I'm just not a big fan of the hand here, and I like this, but I think the hand is uh, going straight towards me. From a silhouette standpoint, I think this is very, it has the, the potential to get lost, but from a value standpoint, I think I could pop out the hand a little bit more and layer that into the, the coat. So I think this one has potential. Um, moving on to this one, you know, I tried to fix that hand situation, and I really didn't like the way it, way it wound up. So I'm moving on to um, this one over here, and I'm having him more lunging for it. And again, I think the problem with him lunging for it um, kind of screws up her size value proportion, um, and there's not enough overlapping here. And then Matt, because technically she should be probably the smallest, um, in actual size, he's the tallest, and she's she's taller. But because of this, I think she comes out as bigger than him, which I think this is a better fix on this situation here. Um, but again, I still don't like this whole uh, you know towering. It, it looks almost like he's towering over um, because of his height is so big. So I think there's a scale issue going on. And it's, it's probably a simple fix, but I'm just not happy with it. 
Um, so I think in the the end, I think this one is kind of just a flip version. Um, I tried the house on a different side and, and tried to play around with different things. And again, I, I didn't care for it that much. I think this is a, a better version going on. Um, it still shows everybody. It's got the lighthouse cabin area here. Um, so everything's, everything looks pretty good. So I think in the end, I'm going to go uh, move on with this, this particular system here. I think this one's a, the better of it. I think the second version is this guy here. I like this this feel to it, um, but the only problem is I think uh, I think Mab is too close, and I can probably uh, scale her a little bit and put her in the background more, something like that. But then she looks like a separate element. So I think I think overall I think this is my better composition. Um, so I would be, you know, start. I would start developing this idea further um, by doing value studies and and uh, the other other sorts of things. So I, I think that's uh, uh, the one I'm going to go with. Okay. So what I'm doing now is I'm taking this original thumbnail, um, the original idea, and I'm going to flesh it out a little bit more into m more of a conceptual idea. Uh, I'm going to put faces, um, I'm going to flesh out the clothes and work on that sort of thing, um, add more detail into the building. Um, and what this is going to do for me is this is going to give me a better idea so I can actually sit down and um, paint out a color scheme and work on uh, that sort of thing. Now, this doesn't have to be perfect because at a later point in time, what I'll what I'm going to do is I'm going to take photo reference of all of the uh, all of these these pieces so that I can get more realistic. But what this is giving me, what this is going to give me, is the ability to kind of flesh out my idea. Um, it also is going to give me the idea that that uh, I can use these poses when I do my photo shoot and kind of push the aspect of realism more when I'm when I'm painting itself. So again, this is just more for for me to get my ideas more solidified on on the paper. Um, this is the type of sketch that you would show an art director. So what we would be doing is you would be actually um, you'd be actually showing this to an art director or a couple of these to an art director after you get done ta um, talking with them and finding out what direction you want. Um, and that's really more or less what what is going on here and as you can see I'm fleshing out the you know the clothing I'm adding in you know the breasts of the character I'm adding in the jacket for the character that wouldn't be there before wasn't there before um, And I'm just mainly fleshing out the the more solid lines, the fingers. Make sure you get make sure you get the hands and feet in there too. Um, even if they're very rough, it still gives you an idea of what you want that character to do. Um, a lot of times, uh, people tend to neglect the hands and feet, and it turns into this. Uh, when you do the photo shoot, you don't know how to di direct the actors. Um, your models to do this sort of thing. So it's it's really about, you know, just getting in this rough sketch, this rough idea of what's going on. Now I'm working on Mab here, um, and Mab is a, a kind of evil, sadistic witch. Um, and she's the Queen of Winter, I think, in the novel series. And so I'm kind of building her, but 
in the end what's going to happen is I'm going to take photo reference and I'm going to have to do a costume design and um, right now I'm putting on the dress and, and kind of building that up and she's kind of got that sort of thing going on and then I'm building up you know as, I, as you can see here I'm building up the basics of this uh, castle and I'm going from there so I'm just putting that sort of thing in and I'm adding in these little details of kind of what I want for this castle um, again the perspective is not really there but it gives me the base idea of what I want to accomplish and you know I might change some things up while I'm doing this um, but in the end it's more or less the just the, the generic aspect of you know fleshing out your ideas putting things down on paper um, you know I'm just building up this tree and then again it doesn't have to be perfect but it gives me a good idea of what I need to do what I need to accomplish painting and putting in a little bit of a background I'm still not happy with the hat and that's mainly because I don't have reference I'm just drawing it from my head so you, you kind of tend to um, not really understand what you know things look like until you actually sit down and, and draw from reference so you know the hat's going to change down the road but I think in the end it's it's uh so what we're doing right now is we're doing value studies and I've basically separated my line work which you can look at the other videos uh, another video for that and I'm putting in the values of what my my subject would be like. So I've cloned this image a whole bunch of times in Photoshop, and I'm really quickly just going to rough in the value system. Now I'm starting with a mid-tone gray, so that you can see the lights and the darks. So it's it's kind of filling the whole thing. Um, when you tend to start with a white uh, canvas or paper, uh, what happens is your values tend to be a lot more bleached out. And with the gray, you have a little bit more information starting with. Now, as you can see here, this is more or less about taking and, and figuring out the, the whole idea of the value composition. Um, this doesn't have to be very clean. Um, it's you know it's not a finished drawing. It's a rough, just to get you uh, an idea of what the lights and darks are going to be in the scene. Now, doing this in Photoshop allows you to um, take this and uh, use it later for the color compositions, um, and I'll show that in in the next video. But what you're doing here is your basically just getting those lights and val uh, dark values. Um, in this particular one, what I'm doing is I'm you know, going to use the light as the focal point. So the, the girl Molly in this particular scene is a focal point in your uh, scene and I'm just kind of you know, starting to paint her brights in there. Just for note, uh, the video is sped up about 200 percent um so uh what you're seeing here uh this entire video would probably take me about 20 minutes or so um as i mentioned before it's you know done fast and quick and it's uh mainly for creating the the information that you need for lights and darks audio is paused will resume
as you can see, once I've got this one done here, um, I can move on to the next particular value. Um, you want to do multiple values, um, even though your color composition might not change in the end, um, just getting those additional values in there will help you problem solve a lot of the issues before you get a chance um, to make them in an actual painting. So what we're doing is, you know, you want to do at least at least 10 of these. Um, and that'll give you, uh, you know, just different ideas of the way things are compiled together. Um, and as you work, you might find you like one value on one thing, and then you move to the next and create another value on another. Um, you know, I, as in this particular one, I, I'm creating a much darker value system uh, with, you know, it, it's very similar to the, the prior one, but now I'm just changing up, um, you know, the sky is going to be darker, the, you know, uh, characters in the background are going to um, flow in a little bit more and it's and it seems very similar but now I'm adding in the highlights um, and things like that to basically pop her out so you can have high contrast low contrast um, images and decide on what you're doing as far as your entire value system um, and each value system will give you, like I said, more information on the prior systems. As you can see, this the difference between the two compositions. This one has a lot darker tones in it, and I can I get more information, um, more of Molly being the focal point. So it's you know it's pushing her to the foreground a little bit more um, and I think that's a, a a key point in in all your uh, values is to use the light and the dark to create a focal point as you can see um, the more you do this the faster of course you get um, as you can see the first one took me uh, well over 10 minutes or so to do and then the second one took me a little bit less time and now this one is is taking me significant less because I'm I'm getting more of what I want in the uh, the value system I'm problem solving between point A point B and then now I'm on point C and I'm problem solving what information I need what information goes where um, and I think that's a key point in doing these, these exercises you're learning different information um, back and forth. Audio is paused, will resume. As you can see, I'm on my fourth one now, um, and what I'm doing is I'm going to do more of a, a high contrast, uh, so very dark, very very bright whites. Um, and again, as you can see, I'm spending you know less and less time with each particular piece. I'm getting the values that I want in there, um, and then building on top of that. And again, these don't have to be perfect, but what you're doing is you're really pushing you know the idea of what your value system is going to look like and that'll that'll give you problem solves so you'll notice when things you know fall into the background and and pop forward and don't pop forward enough so it's just a matter of 
um, you figuring out what's going on with it. And, you know, this, this isn't the final situation. It just, it gives you the ideas, the problem solve, um, what you're trying to figure out. This is the end of the audio. Once you have your values done, then what you're going to do is uh, you have the opportunity to find the best value that works for you, and you're going to create a um, series of the same value system, and then you are going to create a new layer above that. With the new layer above that, what you can do then is create a overlay or a color layer and paint solid color over it. And what this will do will give you um, the ability to give you a different hue, change a different color in the um, individual uh, illustration that you're doing. Now, when you're doing this, you have to realize that, especially in Photoshop, what's going to happen is uh, the dark values are going to automatically appear dark. So no matter how... Um, dark you have this it will it, in this particular layer it will always appear to be black and that is just um, one of the the functionalities of Photoshop as far as that goes as you see, can see from here I'm going to start filling in the um, background colors with with a overall large brush um, it's more or less to get my value tone system on there and paint something very similar. Now if you notice that I'm sticking with certain color uh, combinations, I, I believe this is a tertiary color system. I'm going with the blues, the greens, and I'm going with like an orange. And that will actually um, give me a triad of colors. Audio is paused, will resume. At this point, I've got the basic color schemes and painted on the overlay or the color layer on all my uh, particular thumbnails that I'm uh, using for roughs. Then after that point, you pick a couple of these and what you're going to do is create a new layer and with solid paint color, you're going to start applying a solid to paint tone on there. And what that will do is it'll refine your existing thumbnail into something a little bit more that you can control. Um, the normal, the layer is set on normal, and that's going to allow you to uh, paint with solid tone colors. So you can, you know, pick colors from the scene and just kind of build them out. Again, this is still rough. Um, it's just more or less to get some of the problem-solving issues down before you decide on what you're actually going to do. 
This is the end of the audio.